Welcome to Animal Inventory TV. I'm Lisa Brown. Our show is based on the premise that animals matter in and of themselves, and that the relationships between humans and other animals are some of the most profound friendships we'll ever know. In this episode, we'll add Christine and Kelsey and Zoe to our inventory of the human-animal bond. One morning before work, I was walking Kelsey, and life just totally changed. I was a type A personality. I was taught that I should study hard, succeed, and success meant making a lot of money. I had adopted a dog named Kelsey. My experience with Kelsey taught me so much, and I, I just realized that there was more to life than having a lot of money and a big house, and actually having those things was pretty meaningless if you didn't have a love in your life. And Kelsey, was she just brought love into my life. Do you think that if you, if any animal you would have adopted at that point would have brought you to that place, or was there something in particular about Kelsey? Kelsey and I really, we really grew up together in so many ways. I thought that I understood the bond between dogs and people, but Christine and Kelsey had a, a bond that was far and above anything I had ever seen before. We were struck by two speeding MBTA trains. A woman who lived a couple floors up from uh, in a building right near the accident heard the crash. She rushed down. She found me impaled against the rail mm -hmm. and Kelsey sitting by me. Mm -hmm. And she had a broken hip. She could barely move, but she was starting to keep close to me. And I was um, in the ambulance and miraculously I started breathing again. When I woke up from my first coma weeks later, the first thing I said that I could manage to say was, how's Kelsey? It was my first thought. All the impact injuries are along the side of my body, not the front. She pulled on the leash and pulled me from, from a direct frontal uh, hit from the train. I know Kelsey saved my life. We spent two years together in recuperation. I, I came to a realization during that time that I wasn't here to do what I was doing before. I was here to help animals. Lo and behold, the obvious finally came to me. I should do what I intended to do, which was to become a lawyer, and I should help dogs. I started volunteering for different groups, working for different animal issues, and just became involved as a volunteer. And I found it so fulfilling. There was an announcement made by someone in Jamaica Plain who said, hey, anybody who's interested in helping greyhounds and ending dog racing, come to this meeting. I was so enthused by the idea that we could actually change the lives of thousands of animals by putting a question on the ballot and passing it. We're holding these signs, this is the right cause, this is the right time, we're gonna end dog racing. So at that point, you entered into law school. And um, how did Kelsey help you along the way with law school? When I went to law school, it was thinking of Kelsey that I got the strength and the courage to do the things one has to do to get through law school. I was doing it because I, the dogs needed a lawyer, and I needed to. I wanted to be that lawyer. It was just a few days after I graduated that she died. She was my strongest ally. When we met Zoe, she, she leaned up against us. And I, I think that was, you know, her way of saying, um, you know, you gotta get me out of here. Until you have a greyhound, you really don't understand um, how unique they are. Zoe represents so many thousands of dogs who are discarded by this industry. She's teaching us that even adopting them out doesn't get them back to where they should have been all along. I couldn't even force her to sit up on the couch before. She was so scared of doing anything that she possibly could be punished for. The poor socialization of these dogs is something they live with for the rest of their lives. I'm trying to help Zoe come along. What is the daily life like? 
for a greyhound who's living at a track. These dogs are kept confined in tiny cages which are barely large enough for them to stand up or turn around. 20 hours a day is the average time they spend in the cages. They are fed what is called 4D meat. 4D meat is a USDA classification for the meat of downed, diseased, disabled, and dead livestock. If you look in my dog Zoe's ear, you can see her tattoo numbers, and these designate her racing number with the National Greyhound Association and her birth date. I mean, this is how the industry thinks about these dogs as numbers. I'm sure that a lot of people who go to racing tracks have their own dogs, they have pets, they have animals in their lives that they love. And I wonder where that disconnect is, where they can go home to an animal that they love and yet not see the suffering that's, that they're contributing to when they go to a racetrack. I can't answer that question. There is a disconnect. It, it, it's not something I, I, can, I can understand or relate to you. When I, I got hit by the train, my life should have ended. And I consider every day after September 10th, 1992 extra. And my focus is on this particular mission to end dog racing. Zoe is an important part of this team, not just because she represents what we're working for, but because she inspires us each and every day to keep working. We just look at Zoe, we're gonna keep fighting.